These are devotions for people at a social distance. In the year 68 AD, the Roman Emperor Nero, one of the worst emperors that by most accounts Rome would ever have, died. And many people welcomed that news. One of the people who welcomed that news was a man named Vespasian, a Roman general who at that moment was fighting in Judea, who was attacking and killing Judeans who were revolting against Rome. And when the news came that the emperor was dead, Vespasian's army hailed him as Caesar, hailed him as emperor, and declared that he should be the next person to lead the world. And there was a Jew, a Jew that uh, history has come to know as Flavius Josephus, who up until that time had been fighting against Vespasian, had been defeated by him. And he came to the newly hailed emperor and said, listen, there's an ancient prophecy among my people, the Jews, that someday God will anoint a special leader that we call the Messiah or the Christ. And guess what? Jo Josephus told Vespasian, you're it. You are God's Messiah because you have been hailed in Judea by your army and you are going to rule the world. So Flavius Josephus hailed uh, jo uh, Vespasian as God's Messiah. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the passage I was reading this morning from the Gospel of Matthew and other parallel passages in the other gospel, the Gospels were written in the aftermath of those events. This morning I was reading in my devotions, Matthew chapter 24, 23 to 24. Jesus says, Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. And I find it really interesting that that passage in Matthew and the other, as I say, parallel passages in the other Gospels were written in the aftermath of those very events that I've just described to you. All of the Gospels were written after that happened, as far as we can possibly figure out. So when the early church, when the first people to read this gospel and the other gospels read those words, what came to mind? No doubt what came to mind was the fact that the Roman emperor Vespasian had been hailed by at least one Jew, probably others, as Messiah. So the model for false messiahs that we have in this passage is a powerful political leader who if you side with him or her, if you declare for him, you can gain much for yourself. And by the way, Flavius Josephus gained so much by uh, recognizing Vespasian as God's Messiah. He became, uh, he took the name Flavius uh, because that was Vespasian's family name. He became uh, he came under the patronage of the Roman Empire emperor. He became rich and powerful beyond all measure because he had recognized somebody rich and powerful and influential as God's Messiah. When you start to think about what that warning against false messiahs, against false Christs is really about, it's about being very wary of powerful, influential, and especially political figures who, by sucking up to them, you can gain lots of power and privilege and maybe even wealth for yourself. That's the kind of thing that was in sight when those words were written down and certainly when they were first read. Makes you think about how some people in the world today, and Christian people, even the elect, uh, the people who are in Christ react to certain populist political leaders and how they hail them as being anointed by God, as being specially sent by God, which is really just a very fancy way of saying God's Messiah.
God's Christ. Be careful of that way of thinking, especially about powerful, wealthy, political figures. That's exactly what we have been warned against. Lord our God, let us be wary of those populist, powerful, influential figure, uh, political figures, those who offer us so much if we side with them, if we pump them up as we declare them as being sent from God in some sense. Make us wary of this. Make us wise. Amen.